Geisha. The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello and welcome to Live Blood London and Neogenesis Systems Live and Dry Blood Analysis online training course question and answers webinar. Today I will be speaking to Dr. Oka Botha who is the tutor on the course. Dr. Oka is the founder of Neogenesis Systems. He is a registered homeopathic doctor with a master's degree in homeopathy. Dr. Ocker is certified in advanced applied microscopy and holds a certificate from New Life Sciences. And he's here now to answer some of your questions. Hello, Dr. Ocker. Welcome to the webinar. Hi, good day. Thanks for inviting me. Um, I'm going to start by asking, what is live blood analysis for those who are new to it? All right. Um, live blood analysis is a technique uh, used by many natural health practitioners um, to assess the health of their clients and to identify a number of underlying imbalances that may be contributing to their client's state of health. The test itself is performed by collecting a drop of blood from the fingertip and analyzing it under a specialized microscope. Um, there's usually a video feed from the microscope to a monitor uh, that allows the analyst to show their clients what they're seeing in the blood. During a live blood analysis session, uh, the analyst usually looks at two blood samples. Uh, there's one live blood sample which is analyzed in bright field and dark field and these are just two methods of illuminating the sample using different settings on the microscope um, and then one dry blood sample. From these two samples, the analyst is able to identify a number of important imbalances that relate to the client's overall state of health and nutritional status. Uh, live blood analysis is not a medical tool and one shouldn't use it to diagnose medical conditions. Its value really lies in its ability to highlight imbalances that can be addressed uh, by changes in the diet, lifestyle, uh, specific supplements and uh, various natural products. And these interventions then provide the body with exactly what it needs to be able to heal itself. Brilliant, thank you very much for that. Um, my next question is, um, what is so good about live blood analysis and how can it benefit me and my clients? All right, well, there's a number of reasons uh, why live blood analysis is actually such a useful tool. Um, it's a completely different way of looking at the blood. It's not a stained blood smear that's normally performed by a pathology lab. Um, the stained blood smear is actually prepared from venous blood, um, so the blood is drawn from a vein. It's then placed in a test tube um, with an anticoagulant and then sent off to the lab where a technician looks at it several hours later um, after killing all the blood cells by staining the blood. So with live blood analysis we collect the blood from the client's finger, um, so it's capillary blood, and look at it immediately while the client is there. Um, because the blood is still alive, we're able to see the cells behave exactly like they do in the body because nothing is added to the blood. Um, we can assess the arrangement, the shape, the size and the overall health of the blood cells. And most people know that the blood is extremely important. Um, you know, it's been called the river of life because it supplies oxygen and vital nutrients to all the cells and it also removes wastes from the cells. So it stands to reason that if the blood is unhealthy that the cells will be unhealthy and then also if we improve the quality of the blood then the overall state of health of a person would improve as well. So this is exactly what live blood analysis allows you to do. We can identify the most important issues that need to be addressed and improve a, a client's state of health uh, we, and we can monitor and track the person's progress during treatment as well and by assessing the changes taking place after implementing specific treatment protocols, we can establish whether a specific protocol is actually working or not and then we can make the necessary adjustments um, 
at a much earlier stage than what would have been possible without blood analysis. So in the natural health field, there are many different products available. There are so many diets, opinions, and protocols that it can be quite difficult, um, can be quite a challenge to work out exactly what needs to be done for each client you see in practice. People if, often end up going from practitioner to practitioner and getting various diagnoses that they have candida or this parasite or virus or that deficiency. And often they have no real way of knowing if the treatment they took had any effect on the condition. So with live blood analysis, it just makes your job as a practitioner so much easier uh, because it identifies the most important imbalances and you can check if the treatment is working. Also, live blood analysis can show the potential for specific conditions that may develop in the future. By addressing these imbalances at an early stage, while they still can be corrected fairly easily by dietary and lifestyle changes, we can prevent these conditions from developing. This makes live blood analysis a very useful tool in prevention, so very valuable for people who want to be proactive about their health. Um, lastly, but perhaps most importantly, the, one of the most important benefits of live blood analysis is that you're anxious about what you may find in their blood. I've not come across any other test that has the same effect. Even your conventional laboratory tests don't have such a dramatic impact on people. I've often had clients uh, who had had a, a lab test done that showed some abnormality, like a raised cholesterol level, and they say, say you know, my doctor thinks it's a problem. So those very same pro clients react very differently when they see what their blood looks like. It's often the wake-up call that they need to start working on their health. So the visual impact it has um, goes a long way towards helping your clients to stay compliant during the treatment and also to come back for their follow-up visits because they want to see for themselves if their blood is actually looking better. Okay, very interesting. Thank you for that. Um, now we've got three questions that are very similar here. Um, uh, what mm. qualifications are needed to practice live blood analysis? What is the legislation around using uh, blood analysis? What qualifications are required to register for the course? And do I need a medical background? So would you like to answer those all together or one by one? No, sure, we'll go through them together. Um, you know, there's no formal regulations around live blood analysis, so in essence, anyone can add it to their practice and anyone can register for the course. Um, it is a tool used in a natural health setting, so the, you know, so it's ideal for practitioners involved in natural health, uh, nutritionists, and also personal fitness trainers and it is used to detect imbalances that can be corrected through nutrition and natural products. So the more knowledge the practitioner has of nutrition and health, the more they and their clients will benefit from live blood analysis. Okay, fine. So um, the next question is, can you give us a little bit of background about yourself and how you got involved in blood analysis and what led you to become a teacher and an expert? Okay, well, I was very fortunate at, um, that I was exposed to live blood analysis at a very early stage of my practice. Um, there was a nutritionist who was using uh, blood analysis in the practice. Um, so, but his training in live blood analysis was very basic. Um, and, you know, even though he wasn't using live blood analysis to its full potential, I can see, uh, well, I could see that it was a very valuable tool. Especially the dynamic it created where clients were fascinated by the test and felt more involved in the consultation and the results were discussed with them and they were shown what was going on in their blood. It was also fascinating for me to see how easily problems could be identified and how effective this was in helping people who had vague symptoms like, you know, just feeling tired or 
not losing weight, headaches, or just not feeling as well as they did a few years ago. At the time I was using iridology and although I learned a lot from iridology, I found that the problem areas in the eyes wouldn't change and show improvement um, in response to treatment in the same way as with live blood analysis. So I did the same basic blood analysis course as the nutritionist and eventually took over his microscope. And then, you know, I just did every live blood analysis course I could find, um, read every publication on blood analysis. I studied the Hemoview course materials from Australia, um, learnt about the dry blood tests through the Bradford Institute and then did the advanced applied microscopy course through New Life Sciences. I also studied um, Robert O. Young's work in blood analysis and his protocols and also studied pleomorphism um, as it was developed by Dr. Enderlein through Sarnum in Germany. And the first edition of our course uh, became available in 2001 and I just added to the information in the course in subsequent editions as my knowledge of blood analysis grew based on my studies and experience and practice. So it grew from there and we now have the fourth edition of the course uh, which is probably the most comprehensive resource on live blood analysis in the world. Since 2001 I've trained nearly a a hundred practitioners in blood analysis. Uh, I've seen thousands of patients and I've had consistently good feedback from my patients and from the clients that are trained as well. Okay, very good. Uh, now somebody's asking what's the mm -hmm. best way to get started in live blood analysis? Alright, well to benefit from live blood analysis you need a really good course um, a high standard of training with as much information as possible. The theory is, is very important but the practical aspects of live blood analysis are also equally important because if you're not able to take blood samples correctly um, then your results won't be reliable. The course needs to be comprehensive and the equipment you use, your microscope system, needs to be up to the correct specifications so you're able to use live blood analysis to its full potential from the very beginning. I've often seen people who want to add live blood analysis to their practice um, but who don't want to invest in a good enough system. So they start with a very basic system that doesn't allow them to see everything they should be able to see and they never really fully benefit from live blood analysis. You know, so the theory, um, the practical proficiency and the correct equipment are all crucial. Good. And how long does it take to really become proficient at live blood analysis? Well, it does require a bit of practice. Um, one needs to be disciplined to learn the theory and practice the technique. The technique of collecting the blood samples is, is actually fairly easy to master. Um, most of our students are completely proficient in this within a month. Most students are also able to identify the most common anomalies um, correctly within also about one to two months. Uh, but it is important to have as much knowledge as possible because clients often ask questions and some clients are also skeptical. So as a practitioner you need to have as much information as possible um, that you're able to draw from. Well, you should be able to start practicing after about three months. Um, you will only really become properly proficient after about six months. You know, that's after seeing a number of follow-up appointments and getting hands-on experience with live blood analysis. Okay, good. And the next question really is very similar. How much experience does a person need to start practicing live blood analysis? Right, well, something that we could mention here is that, um, you know, you need enough practical experience with the microscope itself to be able to use the equipment easily without becoming distracted by the settings that need to be changed between bright field and dark field and so on. Um, you know, it doesn't inspire confidence when an analyst fumbles around with the equipment trying to work out what setting to change. 
Um, having said that, we've uh, made we really made a point to keep the system we recommend as user friendly as possible, um, while at the same time not sacrificing on quality. Okay, good. And all that practical experience with the microscope is covered during the course, yes? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. All the settings and all of that is discussed as well. Good. Um, now the next question is, what do you need to become really successful at live blood analysis? Well, I would say firstly that you need a, a strong foundation of knowledge about the various anomalies in blood. Um, how they relate to each other and the state of health of, uh, of a client presenting with these anomalies. Um, this is emphasized in the course as well because it's very important that the analyst looks at the various findings in a client's blood as pictures and clues uh, that relate to a story. So they need to be able to look at all the information they're collected and come up with a coherent understanding of what is affecting the client's health and what really needs to be done to improve their condition. It's very different from just prescribing something for each and every separate anomaly seen in the blood. If you do that, your clients end up with too many products to take and the recommendations you give them won't be simple enough for them to follow. So we look at all the separate anomalies and we'll work out what the primary and most important issue is that needs to be corrected. And that will lead to improvement directly and indirectly um, in the majority of the anomalies and in the client's symptoms as well. Secondly, uh, your equipment needs to be up to the correct standard. Uh, there's no point in having the knowledge but not being able to use it because you can't see you know, everything that can be seen in blood analysis. It's uh, also important to have a good referral network um, and also professional premises where your clients will feel comfortable. You will also need to have stock of the products that you recommend most of the time uh, because people generally want to take something right away to start working on the condition of their blood. I've also found that it's important not to overcomplicate things. Uh, people are generally resistant to change and especially when it comes to their diet. Uh, with live blood analysis, because of its visual impact, people become motivated to change. It's important to be reasonable about what you expect your clients to change in their diets and to rather let them make changes slowly that, than to put them on a specific strict diet that they're only going to be able to follow for a short period of time you know, due to their day-to-day -day commitments. You also found that the more experience you have with live blood analysis, the more you'll have faith or trust in the test. Uh, you'll encounter some clients that may have more of a medical background and are skeptical, not only of live blood analysis, but also of you know the natural health field in general. It's important not to be influenced by their doubts, and if you have enough experience with live blood analysis, you'll very easily see where the skepticism is coming from. If you use live blood analysis for what it was designed to be used for, uh, then you'll see just how effective and, and relevant it is. And uh, what are some of the common problems that people experience in setting up their own new live blood analysis practice? Well, you know, I think what I mentioned earlier about having the correct equipment and training, uh, that's very important. There are also many courses in uh, live blood analysis available and many of them only cover the basics. There are also courses that only teach one specific school of thought like pleomorphism um, and it's important for a practitioner to get as much information as possible about the various conditions that can lead to a specific sign in the blood so that they can use this information in context with the client's condition to best understand what needs to be addressed. I've also found that your setup needs to be professional. Clients need to feel comf comf comfortable and confident in you as a practitioner. Um, so one needs to have a, a proper practice setting. Um, also another potential pitfall is when clients don't understand what we're looking for in the blood. So the practitioner should explain to the client beforehand that blood analysis is not used for medical diagnosis and that we're focusing on finding out 
what to do to improve their health as opposed to diagnose them with a particular disease. Uh -huh. And is Enderline theory of pleomorphism taught in the course? Yes, uh, we cover the theory of pleomorphism in detail um, and all the phases of development and the particular growth forms identified by Dr. Enderline. Um, that's done in a chapter and then under each anomaly we also discuss the pleomorphic perspective. Um, but the course is not exclusively pleomorphic. There's a lot of other information as well that we, that we draw from. Okay, and um, do you teach phase contrast or dark field? Right, well the systems we use are fitted with bright field and dark field. So the images that you'll see in the course materials would be either bright field or dark field images. Uh, we don't use phase contrast because you, you know, if you do bright field and dark field, you won't be able to see anything else by using phase contrast. Uh, Phase contrast was developed as a less expensive option to dark field, um, but even with the best phase contrast systems, you won't be able to see everything that you can see with dark field. So that's why we focus exclusively on, on bright field and dark field analysis of live blood. Okay, good. And um, does the course cover treatment? Yes, the uh, necessary dietary and lifestyle changes as well as the specific herbal and nutritional products are all discussed under each uh, blood anomaly. Okay, and the final question is, what makes this course different from other courses? Well, this course draws from a variety of researchers, um, whereas other courses usually only offer one researcher's view. Uh, we cover live blood in bright field and dark field in detail, as well as dry blood analysis. The course is uh, online, interactive, recorded and available at any time, uh, versus workshops that would require travel and accommodation, and where practitioners are often left with manual lacking important information and no backup and help when they actually start to practice. There's no other course that offer as much information and detail plus a huge database of images and videos as well. And because the course draws from many researchers, you are likely to encounter a lot of information that is not covered in any other single course. This has also been confirmed by many clients who were looking for more information on blood analysis and found that our course helped them to uh, use live blood analysis to its full potential. Good. Well, um, thank you very much for answering these questions today. And um, I hope it's been useful to you all. Please do keep your questions coming. We will be holding further webinars and we'll keep you posted. So if you do have any questions, please send your questions to info at livebloodlondon.co.uk. And if you would like more information on the online training course, please go to the website www.livebloodlondon.com. So that's www.livebloodlondon.com for the website and info at livebloodlondon.co.uk for uh, questions and answers. And we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. And thank you, Dr. Oka. Thank you. Thanks for letting me come in.